let's get rolling and talk about the top 10 toxic people in your life and how to identify them right now. Coffee with Colleen. Today we're going to talk about number one critic. So you are the product of the five people that you spend the most time with. Whether you like it or not, these people rub off on you. And, and part of it is how you feel after you've been around them. And if they bring you down, Zig Ziglar used to tell this amazing story. It's like, who's kicking your cat? And it's basically, there's a man at work and, you know, um, you know, the boss comes into work and the boss ha- was in an, uh, a, a, a traffic jam. And so he's in a bad mood. So then he comes into work and um, his, you know, he, gr- he goes to take the, the coffee off of his desk and he spills it and he blames the secretary because, you know, she had it too close to the edge. And, and then the secretary now has coffee all over her because the guy spilled coffee on her. And so as she's walking to the copy machine or, or you know, to make copies, um, somebody makes a nasty comment to her or she runs into somebody or, you know, and then so something happens to her and then she sees this other guy and the other guy, you know, um, and then, and then the, that guy goes home and he has a bad day and kicks his cat. Where did it all start with? Because the first man who came into the office had was been stuck in traffic. So we are impacted by the people that are around us, whether they're toxic or not. And even more so, these people that are so emotionally draining uh, are the toxic people. So how to spot these people is the first step. Because being exposed to them causes your brain to have like a massive stress response and who needs more stress in our life, right? And that has a long lasting negative impact on your health, let alone your moods. So they don't just make you miserable, they make you sicker and they make you dumber because they really like mess with your brain. So again, number one is the critic. And these people, they may not like come right out and be critical to you and say, you look horrible today. Or they may not like cut you down, but, or or call you names. Good morning, Melanie. Uh, But they may kind of insult your beliefs or your thoughts, maybe your appearance in those little, subtle, little passive aggressive ways. Like you're wearing that. Okay. And it holds you back and hinders you really uh, as a person, right? And they, they, they criticize you, not the things you do or like the ugly, you know, they're just, they're just critical anyway. And the worst is of course a parent. Now, if you have a parent that calls you a bad person, not that you did a bad thing, but a bad person, that sticks with you. And we're talking about that right now in the Gorgeous Gals in the private group because we're going through this 12-week coaching program. And one of the gals brought up, yeah, but what if you were raised with a critical parent who said you're an ugly child or, you know, yeah, but you've got buck teeth or um, you can never be a model because you're too ugly (laughs) Uh, or whatever. These things that when it comes from a parent, it's even longer lasting. And again, it takes 10 positives to outweigh one negative. And I think it's multiplied when you're a child because think back if you, is someone, and let me know in the comment section, did someone ever say something to you as a child that you still remember 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years later? You'll never amount to anything. Yeah, but you have ugly teeth. Yeah, but you're buck-toothed. These these offhanded comments that are made to us when we're children or that we may make. My my children have said, yeah, but you told me once that I was a horrible singer. I never said you were a horrible singer. I just said you weren't ready for American Idol yet, you know, and how they interpreted that was never sing again. Negative Nelly, the critic, wastes so much of her time and energy. Sadly, yes. Passive aggressive vampire, says Bo. Uh, hey, good morning, Amy. Um, so good morning, Maria, Melanie, Colin, Rebecca, Den, Lori. Yes. So um, these people are just a real drag and a drain. So again, if you want those notes, comment toxic below and that will go to your Facebook messenger. It's kind of a process. You have to go to your Facebook messenger or if you just want them, the link is in the show notes um, at the top of this page. Um, and then you comment toxic in Facebook messenger and it'll give you the link to go to, or the link is right above, but that will give you the show notes. And it also gives you a copy of the ebook, which is the show books. The show notes are in there, but kind of expanded. And then the very next page I'm offering now the $47 course for $7. So, uh, it's a, um, multi-part three, four part course. I forget what it is, but how to deal with toxic, how to identify them, how to deal with them, how to remove them from your life, and then how to heal once they are gone. So that's in the course. Anyway. Um, so instead of appreciating the critic doesn't appreciate people that are different from them. It's because they're different from them that they cut them down. 
because they, they just can't stand anything being different than them. So they think their their way is the only way and they they just judge everybody else. And they, dis, they these judgmental people will stifle your passion. They, they, they prevent you from being expressive. And um, so it's just best cutting them out. And the interesting thing is once you've cut them out of your life, you're like, why did I wait so long to do this, right? Because then afterwards it's like freedom. And it's harder when they're a family member, um, but sometimes more beneficial. So that's number one is the critic. Number two is the gossip. Great minds discuss ideas, said Eleanor Roosevelt. Average ones discuss events. Small minds discuss other people. So the gossip, if they're talking about other people, when the other people aren't around, guess what? When you're not around, they're talking about you. So they get pleasure from other people's misfortunes, it seems. And they, you know, and, and it's so much a part of our culture because what do you see on the, the stands that are right at the checkouts at every single solitary checkout that you ever go through in your life and i don't care if it's at the convenience store at the big box store at a grocery store wherever you are that there's a line for the cashier there's a gossip magazine guess what's going on in this person's life right and it's sometimes you know it's kind of fun to look at it behind the scenes in another person's life but that's different than going, oh my gosh, look at the tragedy. And almost taking that slight bit of joy and another person's misfortunes, um, that's, there's just something, there's just something wrong about that, right? So there are too many positive events going on there and too many positive people to copy and emulate and, and look at um, and not be sucked into all the negativity, right? So number two is the gossip. Number three is people who have like, temper tantrums, right? Freedom, yes. Um, there, there's just the temperamental people that kind of like, okay, did we not grow out of this when we were two? Were these people never told when they were two and three years old not to stomp their foot and have a tantrum? Or were they allowed to be express, to be expressive and express their emotions because that was a healthy thing? Now, Temper tantrums are bad when you're two, they're bad when you're 20, um, they're bad when you're 200, I don't care how old you are. Two, you know, temperaments are, or temper tantrums are bad. And they're hard to, these people are really hard because they're super, they tend to be really super passive aggressive. And they lack control over their own emotions, which ties us back to the emotional intelligence course. You guys are gonna love Black Friday, by the way. Um, and it makes you, you know, so they, they, they know what to say. They're like master manipulators to know what to say to make you feel bad. Um, while they're having their temper tantrums over how things should be done their man, their way, right? So temperamental people will use you as their emotional flushing ground and they make you feel bad for them and then they walk away and then you're like, ooh, they, they just have dumped all their junk on you and, and walk away and now you're like carrying around all this boohoo because of their temper tantrum. So temperamental people are damaging in a lot of different ways. So that's number three. Number four, people who are perpetual victims. <laughs> now there are people, these two people are hard to identify because you empathize with them. You go, oh, bless your heart. Oh my gosh, bad things always seem to happen to you. I know one person in particular that this is that way. You know, that is this, but it's like, she shouldn't talk about any of the positive that happens in her life. She only talks about the crises and then uses it to manipulate. So, um, and as you, as you go through, if you, the longer you've known this type of person, you realize that they're constantly in need. It just seems like, I mean, a God does pile a lot on certain people's lives, but this person seems to almost invite it, almost like the drama. They almost, they're, they're not comfortable unless they're dealing with a crisis. And if there isn't a crisis, they'll create one. <laughs> Do you have one of those people in your life? It's like, not that, that ain't what I said, right? So victims actively push away their own personal responsibility because if they hit a pebble in the road, they make it into a wall or a speed bump or an accident, you know? Um, and they, they can sometimes, now don't differentiate this from the sanguine who relishes a story. Oh my gosh, guess what happened? 
right? We're not talking about sanguine personalities that love to tell you the story and they may like kiss the Blarney Stone and embellish it a little bit for entertainment purposes. That's one thing. We're talking about the perpetual victim. They don't see tough times as opportunities to learn and grow. Now say a sanguine will go, oh my gosh, guess what happened? But a victim will be like, I know. God will sustain me. It's, it's okay. I just really need some help right? There's, so there's a difference. So don't, don't cross that line there, right? There's an old saying, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. It goes back to what we were talking about last week about making the choice to be happy, right? There's a choice. That pain is inevitable, suffering is optional, kind of defines the victim. They choose to suffer and made a big thing about it. And when you cheer them, they argue with you. Exactly, Mary Therese. Exactly. I don't understand people thrive on crisis. Yeah. When does the sun shine in their lives? The sun is always shining, but they just don't see it, right? Number five is the self-absorbed person. They bring you down through their distance from other people. They, you know, they're like the black hole in the room, right? You start to feel alone even when you're with them because it's all about them. And they're, uh, the psychological term is they're stonewallers. And that means they refuse to communicate on an issue or an event or um, any point. They say, well, it's not, you know, it's the, what's the use? You know, why bother? Is kind of their um, uh, modus operandi. They may come across as cold. They refuse to admit there's a problem. And if there's a problem, it's yours because they don't see it as a problem. And so they set up walls and barriers and it's really hard to have a successful relationship with a stonewaller <laughs> um, or the self-absorbed person because of how they just internalize and don't deal with things. And they make you feel guilty and resentful because there is no problem. There's no problem. You're trying to discuss something and they won't. So sometimes it's it's a lack of emotional maturity it goes to go back to emotional intelligence again right um because they they don't know how to express their emotions they don't know how to deal with their emotions they don't know how to identify their emotions so they just shut down and say it would just be better not to deal with anything altogether as opposed to deal with anything so they don't engage in interpersonal dialogue or any kind of discussion number six is the green with envy person or the person is just greed anyway. The grass is always greener on the other side of the street or elsewhere. And um, when something great happens to this person, they end up not ha getting any satisfaction from it because they always think there's something better out there. Yeah, but it's just not good enough. They're not satisfied. They're not grateful. They have no sense of gratitude. And they, they measure their good fortune or... Um, uh, something out there, they measure it against somebody that's way ahead of them or, you know, there's a difference between that competition thing where it's like, yeah, I'm doing really good. Pat yourself on the back and then strive to be better. And the person that's just never satisfied because they're always envious of what other people have. They don't have a sense of gratitude in their life. So they, um, they're dangerous, they're dangerous because they teach you because of their example, if you will, were to trivialize your accomplishments. Because they, they, they don't just internalize this grass is greener type of thing. When something good happens to you, that's like, oh, that's great. Yeah, did you hear about so-and-so who's better than you? Come on, let's rejoice in this accomplishment or let's just be happy about this thing. Um, but they seem to want to compare it to somebody who's better than them, better than you, better than anything. And they trivialize all of your accomplishments. And you just don't feel good about when you try to share your joy with this type of person. It, it ends up turning into like, oh, well, I guess that wasn't such a happy thing that I experienced, right? I thought, I thought things were going pretty good. And now that she pointed that out, I guess they aren't. So the envious person needs to be avoided like the plague. Number seven, oh, 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 I'm good at pass spotting these people. Passive aggressive. Passive aggressive. Morning, Connie. Um, Fiona, you're late. That's okay. Stonewallers, yes, Katie. Definitely have a hard time with successful relationships with them. It is so hard. Hey, good morning, Kim. Hey, Ruth. Uh, yeah, they focus on the negative about you to make themselves feel better. Yeah, and it never quite seems to be good enough. 
Uh, Roy, this is a really good point. Those who see a solution to every problem, those who see a problem in every solution. Yeah, they're always looking for the, the stone bumps or the, um, the, the bumps. Victims that are blamers. Yes. Good point, Jocelyn. Yeah, they refuse to see anything that's good. And Mary. Yeah. They are, yeah, that's amazing. Okay, number seven is passive aggressive. Common examples of the passive aggressive person is they keep you waiting um, or make you late for an appointment. They know that time is important to you, so they'll make you late. So you're like, yeah, let's, we need to get there at seven. And so we need to leave at 645. And you're ready to go at 640. And they're still puttering around the house or I have to empty the dishwasher or let me do this one last thing or you know what I'm not gonna wear this I'm gonna change and then come on come on come on come on come on, come on. we're gonna be late oh don't worry about it you know and so they almost like they do that on purpose to, to teach you a lesson that you're just being too um, uh, no, I'm not gonna use that word and you're just being too particular so they're gonna teach you that lesson just by dragging their feet and being late that's one example and, and this is these people you don't you you sometimes feel like you're around walking on eggshells when you're around this person um because of of how they will respond or how they'll turn things around they're sarcastic they may give you backhanded compliments they're defensive they um you know the backhanded compliments is a big thing you know like wow you look nice normally hair doesn't normally look that good why can't you just leave it at you look nice? Why did you have to throw it in that other thing, right? Um, and they manipulate. And they suck the time and energy out of your life by how they manipulate things instead of treating you like a friend. Okay, what's going on? I just lost the feed. Okay. Now I can't see anybody's comments because Facebook just crashed on my end. So I'm not sure if I'm still on or not. Oops. And because of this whole thing I've got going on, I can't, hold on a second. That's okay, good thing I'm not recording. <laughs> Let me see if I can get back to the feed so I can see your comments. Oh, I'm just knocking everything down here. So I shall continue and hold on, let me get your comments back, I apologize. I don't know why Facebook treats me so. <sighs> oh, okay. It's not letting me back. There we go. Okay, you still see in here. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> okay, good. That's good to know. Let me get down so here so I can see your comments. So they're tricky to deal with. And let me get, here we are. Good, I found it. They're tricky to deal with because, where are my notes? Um, they treat you like a friend right? They, they kind of like pretend to be your friend. Happiness hijackers. You got it, Vicki. You got it. Um, then they, they, but they know what you like and they know what makes you happy and what you think is funny. Um, but they use this as information, kind of like this hidden agenda. They're going to use it against you. And they always want something from you. And it, instead of being grateful givers, they're, they're, um, they're, they're suckers. They're vampires of your joy. They do anything to win you over just so they can work you over. You know what I mean? So, um, especially hard if it's a spouse. You're right, Connie. Yeah. Especially hard if it's a spouse, you got to distance yourself and it, it's painful. It's painful. Um, number eight, similar, the black hole. When a black hole enters a room, it kind of goes dark. They kind of suck the energy out of the room. You know how I, I always say, you know, you want to be the person that walks into the room. There's two different types of people. Those who walk in the room and say, here I am. And somebody that walks in the room and says, oh, there you are. I've missed you. Right? They make it about you. Um, then the black hole just kind of walks in the room and sucks out all the joy and the energy. You know, they're like, what was it, pig pen that, and, and the, uh, the um, peanuts that had the cloud over their heads, kind of, ooh. And the negative negativity, and the, if they just kind of suck the life out of anybody else. And it's just no matter what you try to do, you can't cheer them up. You can't, you know, somebody said that earlier about a, another one of these toxic peoples. And their peoples, people, uh, their view of the world is always the glass is half empty. Or even when it's half empty, they say it's a um, you know three quarters empty, you know, um, and they they can they can 
like make any situation worrisome or fearful. Like you'll say something, you go, wow, aren't, aren't you worried about that? Aren't you worried your children be kidnapped? No, I wasn't until you mentioned that. <laughs> now I am. So a Notre Dame University study found that students assigned to roommates who were negative were far more likely to develop negative thinking and depression and lower grades. And it's even when you, you know, I mean, how much, you know, I had a roommate assigned to me when I was a freshman. I didn't spend much time with her, but she really had an impact on my life. So even when you're around the black hole, these negative people, they will have that impact on your life. Number nine is a twisted sister, the twisted person. This is the twisted personality. And there are certain toxic people who just have bad intentions. They derive satisfaction from the pain and misery of other people. And I think these people are more like have a psychological disorder, right? So, but they are toxic, but they, they are out to hurt you. They are out to make you feel bad. They're out to get something from you. Um, otherwise they have no interest in you. You are nothing to them. They're only out for what they can receive from you. And oftentimes now, I'm not saying this person is possessed or evil or they may have had, okay, anybody watch Stranger Things? Stranger Things 2 in particular, I'm talking about, and I can't remember the character's name. I think his name was Billy. Billy and his stepsister moved to town and Billy had the mullet and uh, that he was just mean and told his stepsister, don't hang around those people. And she was trying to make friends and don't do this and don't do that. And, and then later in the season, I think it was probably the fifth or sixth episode, there's a scene where his dad confronts him and his dad was telling him, oh, you're just, you're this and you're horrible and you're just a piece of, you know, and throws him up against the bookshelf and, and just tells him what a horrible person he is and, and, and hits him and beats on him. And he's a high school age person, right? Um, and as his dad walks away, this tough guy, this, oh, getting all verklempt, uh, this tough guy has a, a tear rolling down his cheek. And so you see, because of how he was raised and how he was really abused by his father growing up, how he just internalized all that anger and then became that way himself and became very hurtful and mean and, and, and to other people around him. And so, yeah, the twisted sister type of person, somebody who's really twisted in that way, deriving satisfaction from hurting other people is probably suffering from deep emotional pain themselves. Doesn't mean that, you know, they need professional help, not you. So you try to get them help, but if they're not accepting help and they can't get help, then it's, it's time to move on. The only good thing about this type of toxic person is you can really spot them quick, can't you? Um, they're, they're very easy to spot because they're so overt in their toxicity and their anger and their um, um, negativity, I guess. Uh, so, hey, good morning, Judy. The actor that plays his dad is filming a movie here in town. Weird tangent. That's okay. <laughs> uh, black hole helps our radiance shine more brightly in comparison. Absolutely. Can one person be more than one type? Yes, Deanna, they can. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, Tina, I know we've discussed this before. Tina and I have discussed about, you know, here I am. There you are. You know, always to think that, the, be the there you are type of person. So that's number nine is the twisted person. And then number 10, the arrogant narcissist. Yowza. This person is never wrong. They are, uh, by the way, God's gift to humankind. They know everything. They're the best at everything, but they tell you so. And they may not be the best at everything. They may just tell you so. Um, good morning, Beth. Hey, thanks for sharing. I appreciate that, Vicki. This is such an important topic. This is one of my most popular series right now, quite frankly. Um, so also, no matter how experienced or intelligent you are, you can never measure up to this person. And they'll let you know that. Um, they'll one-up you on anything. They, the narcissism is actually considered a personality disorder. So it's on the list, but it's very toxic. And again, they're... The, 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 Sometimes they're easy to spot, but sometimes not because they may be good at things, but they place themselves on a pedestal to look down on you. 
and they they always try to make everything like a competition and they they score keep and or score scoreboard stuff you know well i did this for you four times and you only you only made me coffee three times so i'm not making you coffee this morning because i'm already ahead of you i've already made it four days in a row um something like that um so they're scoreboarding and keep track they don't have any understanding of empathy and charity and justice and that type of thing they'll they'll ruin um your birthday or maybe a milestone in your professional career because they need praise they need attention they never want to take the spotlight off of them and turn it on to you even just briefly uh, and they actually truly deep down inside they hate themselves so they're constantly looking for something to make themselves feel better and it's pushing you down to make themselves because they're here and they may say you as here so they got to push you down to make themselves feel better and they'll they're willing to destroy everybody and everything around them when they feel hurt or rejected so this type of arrogance is really a false confidence and you know, is a sign of major insecurities. Uh, they tend to be, arrogant people tend to be low performers. Um, they're more disagreeable. They have more cognitive problems uh, than the average person. So these are, uh, and we all know them, right? But sometimes you really have to take a step back and look at who this person is and just kind of scratch the surface a little bit and say, why, why are they doing this? Why are they saying this? Is it about me? Is it about them? Um, and it does take a lot of energy, Jocelyn, absolutely. And they can be, the, very good point, Lori, they can be it without realizing it because they're not dealing with their own problems. So um, definitely they can do that. Narcs are very contrary people. If you ask for chocolate, they'll give you vanilla. Yeah, ah, that's so true. That's so true. Yes, Vicki says we can shine our own light and feel comfort in our authenticity. So uh, we'll review those top tens. And again, if you want a copy of the notes, put toxic in um, the comment section, either toxic or me, and check your Facebook message, or just go right to the, the show notes here on Facebook, or if you, um, I didn't record this for YouTube, um, just go to the show notes and it will have the direct link you put in your name and your email address and it'll send you an ebook it'll have the top 10 but it'll have more stuff in there and then the next page will take you to a series it's a series i did on toxic people it's normally 47 dollars, but right now i'm offering it for seven the price of a starbucks coffee seriously uh and and how this i have gotten so much feedback from psychiatrists who have gone through the course that were like girlfriend that was amazing i am using some of this information now in my own personal practice so it was very heavily researched and uh, um that like i said the series is normally actually i think it's normally 97 not 47 come to think of it um but it's how to identify them how to remove these people from your life and then how to heal from the damage they have done and if you're here earlier you know that i'm going through a lot of uh, you know identity theft issues in my life right now so i'm trying to frankly just being honest trying to generate a little bit of extra cash um so i know seven dollars is probably not a lot for you but right now it's a lot for me because of what's going on so i thought you know what I haven't talked about toxic people in a, a long time. I'm dealing with toxic people right now. And I just felt that God really encouraged me to do this. So you get to take the course for seven bucks instead of 97. So it's an 85% discount um, and it's gonna help you. It truly, truly will help you. And it'll help me out at the same time. So let's go through the top 10 again. Number one is the critic, people that are super critical. Number two is the gossip. You know, if they're gossiping about other people, they're gossiping about you when you're not around. You know what the best part was? As I walked up on somebody in my home that was this way, and now I know a lot of her background and situation, and I know what she was in an abusive situation and why she did some of the things she did. But at the time, I didn't know that, and I really didn't care because she was standing in my home as a guest in my home, gossiping about me. And I walked up behind her so everybody else in my kitchen could see her because she had her back to me. And I was standing about 10 feet behind her and I walked into the room and I stopped and she was talking about me and they're like looking at me and looking at her and they knew I was there. She didn't know I was there. They knew I could hear everything she was saying. 
and somebody else kind of like gave the high side like I was standing behind her and this gossip person turned around and looked at me and she was kind of horrified <laughs> thankfully she you can tell she felt bad about the things she had, she had said and I just smiled and I said uh, why don't we move outside and uh, Dennis is almost done on the grill cooking things and we'll just take this outside and I just turned and walked outside out of the kitchen it's like whoa so yeah the gossips are gossiping about you if they're gossiping about other people yeah, gossip with you, they'll gossip about you. Exactly. Number three is the temperamental person. They have no control over their emotions. Number four is the perpetual victim. Number five are self-absorbed people um, who are just kind of all about them themselves. Number six are the people who are green with envy. The grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Number seven is passive aggressive. Number eight is the black hole that sucks all the joy and emotion out of everything. Number nine is like a psychological disorder. There's somebody that's really, really twisted. And number 10 is the same, the narcissistic um, personality. So um, for the copy of those notes, just go ahead and either linked, linked above um, or yeah, she was horrified. Well, she yeah, she was kind of horrified. Let's take this outside. <laughs> Or I could beat you up. Yeah, you could hear a pin drop. It was, and it was funny because I heard that in the kitchen. I couldn't hear what anybody was saying. And then I came um, into the kitchen and I, I like, there was something on the table and I stopped to pick it up. And that's the only reason I heard the conversation that was going on. So yeah, cash flow is good. Yeah. Okay, Lori, I will. Yeah, it's a seven hour drive. Trust me, I've done it enough. <laughs> I would love to come. Mm. Narcs are really bad when they're in a supervisor role. Kim, wow, absolutely. Uh, Janine says, can they be a combination of the, the different types of personalities? Yes, yes. Chances are they're not all 10, although they can sometimes seem like it. Take some identity work to shine in your authenticity. Yes, the culture drags us all down. Yeah, it is a big battle. Truly, truly is a big battle. Uh, what Lori said below. I don't know what Lori said below. Oh, do a conference in the community. You can stay with me. Yeah, I'll stay with you too, Melanie. She was horrified. Uh, I, I do know um, bully beatdown. <laughs> you know, I was known, um, I had an older brother. My two older sisters were married and out of the house by the time I was nine. And then I had an older brother that was about two and a half, three years older than me. And um, so I grew up with an older brother and I learned to fight early. And then I got a paper route. So I remember this one kid, he was the neighborhood bully and he kept, I'm going to rearrange this just a wee little bit. Um, he would knock over, of course, this is in Michigan, right? So he would knock over my bike with all of my papers on my bike and he would um, back over the bike and my papers would spill out into the snow. Well, I can't deliver um wet papers right so i had to go buy new papers so at one point i had had enough of this kid and um he pushed over my bike i was up at the door delivering and collecting you know because when you deliver the newspaper once a week you would go and collect a dollar and a quarter or whatever it was a week for the, the for the uh, daily newspaper and i was um on fridays where um, i would go collect and I was at the door collecting and he, uh, just as a person shut the door, he like ran by and knocked over my bike. And it was just like the straw that broke the camel's back. And I chased him through the snow, up the street. I was so mad. I was crying. You, you ever get to that point, I mean, especially as a child, you get so mad you're crying. I still do that as an adult sometimes. Um, no, not really. But um, I tackled him in his front yard and just started uh, just like blindly beating on him. You ever seen a uh, Christmas story? And Ralphie um, finally snaps and beats up the, the neighborhood bully, bully and he doesn't remember anything. He just, he was rock a rock a rock a rock and he's, that was me. I was beating on this kid. That's why I love that movie so much. That and, and when he put his tongue in the pole. Um, so I'm beating on this kid and literally there was blood in the snow. This is how I remember it anyway. Maybe there wasn't. And the mom came out and started calling me a bully. I was the neighborhood bully which apparently her son had told her I was the neighborhood bully, which is why he was picking on me. So anyway, <laughs> so I finished my paper out and I went home. <laughs> it was all upset. And I told my dad what had happened and, and my, my mom wasn't home at the time. And so uh, the um, mom 
comes to the door bum, 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 with her son crying in a bloody nose and and she said i just want to tell you your daughter is a bully she beat up my son and my dad had the hardest time keeping a straight face i'm like how, how? And obviously a dad wouldn't do that. A dad wouldn't drag his son over to another dad's house and say, your daughter's a bully. She beat up my son because the dad would be, you know, I'm going to teach you to fight. So the next time that bully girl in the neighborhood, she won't humiliate you like that. Right. It's one thing for a guy to beat up another guy, but for a girl to beat up a guy, you know, and I was 12, I think 11 or 12 at the time. And, uh, my dad just like, oh yeah, we'll take care of it. We'll take care of it. We'll take care of it. And, and shut the door and said, if that kid ever does it again, do the same thing. You know, defend yourself. You defend yourself. You don't let people take advantage of you. You probably should have done something earlier. He said, but the next time if somebody ever does this to you again, and it happened one other time, he said, the next time if someone ever does that to you again, you go marching up to their parents, their house, you knock on the front door and you tell their parents, you let their parents deal with them. You know, so that's your first line of defense is to report. And if nothing happens and they do it again after you've already reported it, go ahead and smash their face in. I don't think those were his exact, his exact words, but yeah, defend yourself. And it's important again, back to the topic at hand of defending yourself against toxic people. And this kid was a neighborhood toxic person. We had a couple of toxic people. You go girls and rank, yeah. I've been accused of being passive aggressive because I, uh, I retreat when I'm upset, but if I don't retreat, I say mean things. I have had to learn to do that as well. And there's a difference between introverts and extroverts and that kind of stuff. And uh, normally what I will do is say, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to cool off. So I'm going to go to my room or I'm going to get back to you on this or whatever, uh, because I have to think about this because right now I'm pretty emotional and I don't want to say something I'm going to regret. So I, I'll get back to you. So, um, I've said that in the past before to really be able to process something. And especially if you're dealing with somebody's toxic, because the logic is gone. When you deal with toxic people, there is no logic. So, um, Sociopaths are the worst and they travel with an enablers and narcs, says Jocelyn. Yeah, ex extricating uh, oneself takes a bit of time. It really does. Uh, I need to learn to identify toxic people, not think it's something I'm doing wrong. Absolutely. Yep. This is a class everyone needs. Yeah. $7 really is a great deal, Tina. Thank you. And, and the course, graciously exit, vote yourself off the island. I know. It feels great. It does. Um, and, and really, it's it's how to identify them, how to remove them, and then how to heal from them. So there's more to just say, oh, I know these people, you know, and then how do you remove them if they're family members? So I talk about that and then how to remove them if they're your boss, how to deal with toxic people if they're in the workplace. Um, and then most importantly is the last section of how to heal because toxic people leave trauma in their wake. And just because you remove them from your life doesn't mean the damage is gone. It just means the continuing damage is gone and you need to heal. And actually I ended up adding that to the course because that's, uh, you know, there's one of the comments that people made. It's like, yeah, I've removed them, but I, I still feel that sting. Or when I think of certain events, things still, so how to heal from them. And again, it's a $97 course, 85% off at seven bucks. Seriously. So uh, grandma would say your Irish is showing. I know my grandma too. Family's tough. They always slip back. They do have a slimy way of re-entering. Is there a deadline? Uh, not right now, Rebecca. I'm just, um, you, you go to the link and usually I make offers up for about a week. Um, and then it'll come down. Um, but that's, it's normally kind of how I handle it. Um, but we are, we're starting to get into uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and I'm working on what, 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 <laughs> which one of my programs I'm going to offer for deals on Black Friday. So um, since I'm offering this one now, I probably won't offer it again on Black Friday. Um, but yeah, and I might be doing Black Friday deals early because of this identity theft. Slime is the perfect word. And it's just kind of, they're just kind of, you know, Beth. I want it, says Lori. <laughs> yeah, get it. Go follow that link. The link that's in the show notes. My dad does rock. <laughs> my dad was great. I miss my dad. He died in January of 2012. So going on six years ago. I miss my daddy. 
So let me see. Let me see what I what comments did I make? Nissa said sometimes you you truly can't remove these people from life, and then good self care becomes imperative. Yeah, self care is not selfish. I'm gonna trademark that comment because I say it all the time. My hubby just had this newspaper delivery conversation on Saturday at a men's group at church. <laughs> I mean, apparently I'm not the only one that has to deal with it. Jocelyn, sociopaths, whoops, are the worst and they travel. I said that one. Um, this is great. Some Mary need to learn and identify. Yeah, it's not anything. It's really worth the seven bucks, truly. You are worth $7 to learn this information. And like Nissa said, sometimes you can't remove them. So it's the sending up those boundaries. Do I still, I have purchased that book, uh, Boundaries. A brilliant class. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bleepy down. That's so funny, tax, 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 tax. Cash flow is good, yeah. Uh, and then Facebook is locking me down and won't let me go back any further. So if I missed one of your comments, make it again, please. So that uh, there's so much wisdom in our family here on our coffee crew. 2012, we lost lots of people remembering them. Yeah, remembering them. Hey, good morning, Leanne. Miss my daddy too. Sounds great. Definitely signing up. Thank you. You're welcome, Rebecca. Yeah, may he rest in peace. Focusing on creating positive sensory memories is a great uh, preventative strategy for toxicity. Yeah. Yeah, you really have to, um, you have to watch out with these people because they can, like somebody said earlier, that they, they'll, they'll whoop, slip back in. Perfect timing for the holidays. You're right, Deanna, because who are a lot of these toxic people that we end up not being able to remove that we have to deal with once a year? And every year when it comes around the holidays, I talk about how to deal with toxic people at the holidays, um, which is really important. Hey, Annette, information is valuable. Tough when it's family. Absolutely, Jackie. So, so very, very hard. So, so very hard um, to... Um, to have Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas or birthdays when you know that Uncle Ted is going to be there. Oh gosh, you know, and then it becomes, then the event ends up being about that person and how to deal with that person instead of just enjoying our time with the people we love. And isn't that the way it always is? Do you do this too? Because I, I know I do this. Like I'll get a negative comment from somebody or somebody will send me a negative email. And that's why I have Jennifer because Jennifer can protect me from a lot of these negative comments and things because people will say things. I'm like, that's not true, you know? And, and so now I don't have to worry about reading those types of things. I have my personal assistant that will read them and filter them. And then she sends me like important comments or um, suggestions for, you know, upgrades or, or whatever. Uh, um, but she's pretty good about dealing with people because she's super, super loving and generous and, and um, never gets, I don't think she's ever gotten snarky with anybody, which is why she does, why I hired her, uh, because she has more of my spirit of being able to being lovingly and graciously dealing with people. But it's so hurtful when you have that one person. And I go back to this one example all the time of Jennifer Lopez, how she had a stadium full of 50,000 people and there was one guy in the back in the front row with his arms crossed, just kind of scowling at her. And so instead of focusing on the 49,999 people that were there to uh, appreciate and love and enjoy her, she just kept thinking about this one guy and how she could perform for him and make it better and make him have a good time. So toxic people become that way in our life. They become the center of the focus. And, and that's what I try to help you work through in the course is identifying them and then removing them and then healing from them. So, and dealing with them is, is part of it as well. How to deal with these people who are in your life. Can you hear that? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's nice having a, sharing the space. Um, but how, how to not let them be the center of attention and the center of focus in our own lives or in other people's lives and how to snip, snip and graciously remove. I wish I had the information when I was younger. You know, I, I'm just blessed that I'm able to help my children with this. And now that they're older, that now they actually like listen to my courses and watch my stuff. It used to be when they were like, hey, can you can you listen to this and, and help me with some edits? Because that way it wasn't about, you know, go find the problems in this or go find the spelling errors and that kind of stuff. So it kind of forced them to read through my materials because nobody wants to listen to their mother. Um, so, but yeah, it's good life skills, Frank. Absolutely true. Focus on friendly folk. Mm -hmm. Isn't that their problem? That's their point. Absolutely. How there is to be the center of attention most more often than not. And they're wounded. They're wounded people who really do need help. And we do try to help them. And, and, but there comes a point where they don't want help. They're really happy wallowing 
And you just have to say, God love you. You know, um, they, they don't want to be helped, so they need to be removed. Thank you, said Melanie, for the great deal. I purchased the course and I'll look it over later. Good. So it's always there for you. It'll always be there for you. Jackie, are we related, said Lori. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm on top live video again. That's because of you guys sharing and, and um, uh, giving the hearts and, and the comments. Thank you, Tina, for letting me know. I'm the top Facebook live video right now. Woohoo! <laughs> That's good because more people can be helped. It just, you know, I'm a learner and I like to learn and share and, and teach other people. And when, I, when I'm going through something personally, I research it and then um, because I have benefited from the research, I can turn around and share that information with you and help you avoid the pain. Because truly, Truly, when you eliminate the toxic people from your life, you go, whoa, wait a minute, why? And it's like the first person that you block on Facebook. You know, the first is always the hardest. And then after that, it's like, oh, I love the block button. You know, I have a whole list of blocked people. Um, because who needs that? Who needs that? And nobody got time for that, right, Tina? And nobody got time for that negativity. Uh, God has bigger things in store for us and a mission for us and a passion for us to, to fulfill in our life. And when these toxic people are holding us back from God's mission, I don't think God's all, all that thrilled about that either. Um, and if we try to help them and they can't be helped, then or they won't be helped, then it's time to move on. And sometimes the only thing you can do is pray for them, Melanie. You're absolutely right. Video knocking me out over and over. Gosh, sometimes. Cheers with coffee. Yeah, great show. Happy wallowers, said Vicky. Yeah. <laughs> I love the unfollow button too. Yeah. And you know, it's like one of those things where, you know, um we 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 um why do we follow people that are like, you know, oh, they said something bad about me, so I'm gonna follow them to see if they're saying something bad about me again. No. Just move on. Just move on. Yeah, evidently the video is going bad because it just locked me out again, too. So uh, Facebook may be trying to tell me something, maybe telling me it's time to go. So anyway, so make sure you take advantage, at least get some, the notes from today. You can get the ebook from today. Um, and then I really do encourage you to go through that information and identify those people that are in your life that are toxic and see um, what you can do to, to protect yourself, protect your children, protect your family from the negativity and the toxicity because when those toxic people impact us we turn around and kick the cat we we can't help it that their moods their their attitudes their comments bring us down and then in turn when we turn to our children or our spouse we're not bringing our very best to them either so it's really important to remove the demonic from your life, to get the people out of your life that are not contributing to um, God's greater mission for you. And move it just up, just move on. Absolutely, Melissa, absolutely. Live in the light, let it go, heal thyself, says Vicki. Absolutely. Carmen's here. All right, so uh, take advantage of that. Uh, any prayer requests, please put those prayer requests below. Um, and I'm going to leave that that option up, I don't know, probably, what day is today? Tuesday? I'll probably leave it up this week, <coughs> um, at least by the end of the week. So take advantage of it. It's 85% off. You really can't go wrong. You are worth the $7. You really are. Thank you, Colleen, says Lori. Keep the great positive uplifting attitude. God is good. Amen. God is good. Uh, thank you for the uh, wonderful class this morning, says Tina. Have a blessed day. Uh, absolutely. Oh, and thank you for, Jill, I did get your picture. Thank you for sending me copies of you with any kind of coffee mug. If you have a coffee with Colleen coffee mug, get yourself a picture of it or just a regular coffee mug and send it to me so that I can give it, um, just send it to Colleen at ColleenHammond.com and Jennifer will make sure the editor gets it uh, because we're doing a new animated opening for the show and I want to feature you is my friends that are the reason that we get here every morning uh, to have coffee. So send me a picture of you with your coffee mug, uh, whatever coffee mug it is that you're drinking out of. It can be a coffee with coffee, coffee with Colleen coffee mug, or just your regular coffee mug. And uh, we'll include it in, it's just going to be a bunch of pictures flying past. So don't, don't, don't worry about sending a perfect picture. It doesn't have to be perfectly lit or anything like that. Just you and your smiling face with your coffee cup or whatever you're drinking out of. Um, so we can include it in the opening. So, uh, thank you for the wonderful information in class. You're welcome, Janine. 
Uh, Tina says, toxic people force my husband and I to make some tough decisions. So glad they did. Our lives are better. Amen. For the holy souls, Brock's back. For Colleen, thank you, Heather. Jill isn't Colleen wonderful. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, thank you for all your deuces, Tina. You're so very welcome. Great hanging out with Colleen and the cool, cool coffee crew, says Vicki. What if I'm the toxic person or if people think we are? Do you have an ebook for that? Um, well, you know what? You, you'll be able to identify if you are one of these toxic people. And, and the cool thing is, is that you, if you do identify yourself, which is so beautiful that you're looking at it and saying, you know, which, you know what that could also mean is that you have a toxic person in your life that's accusing you of being the toxic person. You're the problem, not them. Um, and so once you identify and you read through and you say, okay, wait a minute, maybe it's not me. Maybe it's one of them that's making me feel like it's me. Oh, wait, wait a minute, that person has to go because now they're making me feel like I'm the top, toxic person. Now I'm the problem. And there's about three or four of, in that list of top 10, there's about three or four of those types of personalities that will do that to you and they'll turn it back around on you and make it seem like you're the problem. Um, so before you accuse yourself, go through and see if there's somebody that's making you feel that way. And, you know, frankly, we can all get better. We can all grow in virtue. We can all grow in charity. We can all grow in gratitude. It's a progress. Life is a journey that you never complete until the day you die. And we're all growing and trying to be better people, which is true. But sometimes other people make us think we're less than we are. So um, please pray for my dad, says Melanie, for the brother and grandma. Uh, Nissa says, pray for our apostolate and our family. Part of our mission is the healing of children who have been traumatized. Talk about toxic people, right? And how dare they do that to a child? Uh, it means that we are always surrounded by toxicity, but God is here in this place. Amen. Thank you for that, Nissa. So important to work with children. You know, like I said, one offhanded comment to a child will last a hundred years. It'll last their entire life. Growing up with a toxic person is, it's no fun. Yay, said Frank. Bingo, says Heather. Uh, growing up a toxic person has made me very reflective too. Praying, Nissa, praying, Prince, uh, Langdon family intentions, says Jocelyn. So, okay, private intentions, praying for everybody, says Rebecca. I uh, appreciate that. Um, let me see, Patty, prayers for continued healing for painful and complicated right shoulder, inoperable rotator cuff. Ow! Unexpected burn in the hand from a large ember that popped from a campfire over the weekend. Ouch. Amy says, thank you. It was helpful. Good, good, good. Prayers for father-in-law passed away this morning. Oh, I'm so sorry. And his wife will need to navigate life without him. Catch up your love. lovely ladies with coffee soon. I appreciate that. Prayers for Texas. Yes, because of the shooting this over the weekend. Um, for Melody, hugs. Uh, lots of messages coming in. Lots of people taking advantage of the offer. Good. Good for you. Self-care is not selfish. Learn this information and, and teach it to your children so that if they have toxic bullies in their life, they know how to deal with the bullies as well. Growing up with a toxic person, says Jocelyn, and not seeing what's going on. Yeah, better now. I know. Yeah, and like, like we've all said, it's so hard when that toxic person is a family member. Uh, but, but I'll be doing another um, coffee with Colleen as we get closer to the holidays in a few weeks. I'll do it a couple of times over the next couple of months of how to deal with family members uh, over the holidays when they really are sucking the joy out of something that's supposed to be amazing. All right, I'm going to head on out of here now. Uh, make sure you at least get a copy of the notes so you can refer to them and look for these people in your life and see what you can do about identifying them because truly identifying them is the first step of being able to see who they are and how they are damaging you and then decide what you want to do about it. Because truly, it's up to you. This person doesn't have any control over you. You can, even if they're a family member or somebody in the workplace or your boss or your pastor, <laughs> there are things that you can do um, to set your boundaries and protect yourself, protect your family, protect your spouse, protect your children. All right. Yay, great show. Woohoo. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you being here, and I really appreciate you sharing this information with other people so that they can remove the toxic people from their life as well. All right. Take care. God bless. And we will see you Thursday. Won't be here tomorrow morning. Uh, actually, I have a show Wednesday. Oh, I'll link it in the show notes. I'm being interviewed about Strength Finders by Rhonda Boyle, who was a guest on our show a couple of weeks back. I'm being interviewed on her show. The information is on my personal page, but I'll put that link here. That's going to be tomorrow morning at, um, I think it's 1130 Eastern. 
Um, but I'll, I'll put, or maybe it's noon. Anyway, I'll put that information in the show notes here on Facebook and also in the comment section. All right, take care. God bless. If I don't see you tomorrow on the show I'm being interviewed on, um, on Rhonda's show, then I will see you back here Thursday morning. All right, take care. God bless. Bye now.